All right, in this review, I'm going to introduce uh, a new rifle chassis system that's just hitting the markets here. Uh, it's a relatively new company, Applied Weapons Technologies, and the stock I'm testing here is a long-range precision chassis. Uh, this is uh, extremely applicable for our series that we're doing right now, the Long Range Rifle Series. So if you're uh, looking for rifle stock, this uh, review might be of some interest to you. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I, I finally got enough rounds of this thing. You may have uh, seen me using it in some of the other long range tutorials. Uh, I was trying to get a little bit of a, a trigger time behind this thing so I could do a good review on it. So uh, here we go. Let's start off with a, just a real basic introduction as to what we're looking at uh, so you can know what we're talking about and then we'll move through uh, materials and methods and we'll get into the actual testing and our conclusions. So what we have here is a uh, Applied Weapons Technologies, which I might refer to as AWT, uh, they're offering a new line of rifle chassis systems that's specially developed for the long-range precision marksman. So this chassis was designed kind of from the ground up to offer a lightweight, yet still harmonically sound platform for the long-range shooter who's looking for the best possible performance from his rifle. This series of AWT stocks was designed by uh, actually a disabled veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces who wanted to offer a chassis that was ergonomically similar to the M16 AR-15 series of rifles and yet ergonomically superior to the other chassis models currently available. Uh, another thing to note here is uh, these rifle uh, stocks are 100% made and assembled in central Kentucky of the good old USA. So that's a pretty good note there. So let's uh, take a look at some of the currently offered products. AWT is currently offering uh, the new long range precision chassis pictured here uh, for the Remington 700 short action, the Remington 700 long action, and also right now the Savage long action. They also have uh, a Savage short action in the works for both uh, different hole spacing models. And I hear they're going to get ready to introduce some Winchester models as well. AWT is also working on a plan to offer a host of different accessories like uh, bolt knobs and muzzle brakes, uh, folding stock options, and other precision uh, rifle accessories like that. I, I presume the website should be uploaded once these items are completed. So keep an eye on the website. So the methods and materials used for this test uh, the model I tested, the model chassis that I, I tested, was the long-range precision chassis uh, for the Remington short action. Testing of the stock was conducted using a brand new Remington SPS varmint and 243 Winchester. The optic in this review is a Steiner Military 3 to 12 by 56 uh, military scope mounted uh, on a steel one-piece TPS 20-minute tilted scope base also using TPS 34 millimeter steel rings. The ammunition I used here uh, is just basically my uh, 105 grain Hornady Amaxes loaded up with 43.1 grains of Reloader 19 and CCI 200 primers in standard Remington cases. The long range precision chassis was also fitted with the optional fore end extension piece uh, with the Harris 9 to 13 inch uh, notch leg S series bipod that was attached uh, to the removable rail via a Caldwell bipod adapter. Testing was conducted over the course of three weeks on the range and in the field over a temperature span of 60 degrees to 103 degrees Fahrenheit at ranges from 25 meters to 1260 meters. So we got in some point blank stuff when we're uh, getting a zero in and we also got in some long range shooting too. So uh, I'm doing both qualitative and quantitative testing for this rifle chassis uh, to determine its overall effectiveness. And we're testing uh, seven different areas. Uh, the different areas uh, being tested were uh, overall quality in construction, ease of installation, fit and finish, overall design, ergonomics, accuracy, performance, and durability. All the final conclusions were developed from actual observations made during testing. So you want to take note that no conclusions were derived from other published reviews or online commentaries. 
our intentions are to deliver uh, as best we can an unbiased and accurate assessment of the product's actual performance in the field. So uh, all notable observations made in the field, whether they were good observations or bad or ugly, were duly noted and reported in this review. So we're going to be honest with you. All right, so let's get on to the testing results here. Uh, first, let's go uh, through overall quality in construction. Our initial impressions of quality upon opening the package were surprisingly positive. The machining looked flawless and the overall fit and finish appeared very refined. The word crude didn't really come to mind when opening the box on this one. Upon more detailed examination of fit and finish, it was noted that the fit of the buttstock mechanisms and foreign extension piece were very, very tight. This chassis was equipped with the rubber Hogue pistol grip that was uh, mated very securely and uh, it was nice and tight. Um, and it looked like a lot of attention went into the contouring and styling of how everything fit together uh, and of all the different aluminum around the main body of the chassis. There's just a lot of good lines in there. Uh, it looks like whoever uh, came up with the final design and uh, got it all uh, programmed in the machining did a really nice job. The AWT Remington short action chassis was uh, specifically designed for use with the Accuracy International 10-round detachable magazines. The alloy steel magazine release mechanism appeared to be of very good design and quality. Inserting and releasing magazines proved that the dimensions and quality of the magazine well were done right. Uh, it just went straight in, dropped straight out. And the magazines locked up securely in the full upright position so that cartridges could be reliably stripped from the magazine upon cycling, but yet the fit along the lateral portion of the magazines on the sides there was not restrictive as to jam it up if it were gritty. So there's enough play in there uh, to work under field conditions, but it was uh, tight in the areas where it needed to be tight as far as its lockup so to strip those rounds off the top of those magazines when you're working the bolt. Uh, reaching the magazine release was pretty easy with the index figure, uh, even while your shooting hand uh, was on the pistol grip and just by extending your finger forward and you can, uh, you know, just hit that uh, magazine release. Now, the mag release is also ambidextrous, so it's uh, got the wings coming off of both sides and it offered the same accessibility from either side. So if you're a lefty, uh, this would work pretty good. The fit and uh, finish of the aluminum portion of the buttstock mechanism itself uh, was also very good. The fully adjustable buttstock on this design rides uh, back and forth along two rails that extend uh, rearward from the action portion of the, the chassis. These rails appeared to be fit very tightly and securely into these uh, precisely machined slots that are uh, inset into the main body of the chassis. Uh, these two buttstock rails were attached securely via four screws. And there was uh, no room for potential wiggle or loosening problems down the road that we could observe during our testing. Uh, you know, initially, looking at these things in pictures, I kind of suspected that that might be uh, one of the weak points. But after looking at it, it was very, very tightly put together. And uh, it, it fit like a glove. You couldn't even see a crack in there hardly. So um, it was very securely fastened. And all the contact surfaces... Uh, where the buttstock itself adjusts back and forth on the rails because it slides on those rails, appeared very tight as well. Um, on this design, the length of pull can be adjusted easily with these two screws located underneath the cheek piece. And again, due to the very good fit and finish, there were really no areas for potential wiggle problems in this part of the mechanism that we could find anyways. The fit and finish of the cheek rest mechanism itself uh, was also very good. The design was uh, such that sh the shooter could position his head behind the optic, and there's a thumb dial that you can adjust from either side of the stock. Um, you can, with your firing hand, your non-firing hand, no matter if you're left hand or right hand, it's on both sides. And you can raise and lower the cheek rest to the appropriate position in just a couple seconds by uh, flipping that uh, thumb screw with your thumb there. Uh, once in position, the cheek rest was secured by the threaded adjustment screw and by two pins, uh, one in front and one behind the screw. Uh, and they kept 
the cheek rest from kind of canting. So that was the design there. The cheek rest itself appeared to be very uh, solidly made. Attached to the te uh, cheek rest is a soft rubber cheek pad, which appears to be attached to the metal cheek rest via adhesive. Although this sample chassis had no problems with the adhesive working loose, I might suspect this would be one of the most vulnerable points to damage areas of the chassis system after our, our review. Looking for potential things that a guy could complain about, this might be probably the one that uh, raised my eyebrow the most, I guess. It, uh, it appears to be of similar design to the cheek pads employed by the first generation Armalite AR-50s and AR-30s, which uh, those things uh, sometimes required re-adhesion of the cheek pad periodically to keep it securely attached. However, upon testing of this AWT chassis, and after even we fiddled around with the rubber cheek piece and, and uh, picked at it and were poking at it and, and testing it, you know, uh, no such problems were actually observed in this model uh, in our sample. And the rubber stayed firmly attached through all of the transit and all the field testing and climbing and, uh, you know, moving the rifle around uh, through the entire time of the review. So uh, in reality, the, the, our model did not give us any problems as far as that thing coming loose, although we originally suspected that might be a problem. Um, the thick rubber butt pad was fitted nicely to the butt stock and offered a very cushioned feel of, uh, you know, upon shouldering the rifle. So that's good. It's about an inch thick. It appeared uh, the stock weight by itself is just a hair over four pounds, maybe like 4.1, 4.2 pounds, something like that. Uh, the overall quality and construction of the stock were actually very good. Um, so that's uh, our conclusion on that portion of the test. Okay, so let's move on to the next portion here, and we'll talk about installation. This is an important part if you plan on doing it yourself. Um, unlike the famous Accuracy International chassis systems, uh, one of which I am in the process of testing right now, uh, the, the, the Accuracy International chassis can actually prove to be quite a headache to install. I don't know if you've ever played with them, but it's kind of like a puzzle trying to find all the little screws and uh, putting it together in the right order, and you got the, the side skins that got attached in there. And it, it can be quite a chore getting that thing uh, in there. Uh, but the long-range precision chassis from a AWT was uh, very, very, very easy to attach to the new Remington uh, SPS barreled action. Basically, all you got to do is simply drop in the barreled action into the chassis. And uh, there's two Allen head uh, action screws, and you just tighten those in there. It takes just like a minute and a half. So that was extremely easy. And uh, this is designed to where you can just go ahead and uh, install it like that. Just, uh, you know, just tighten those two screws and, and that's what it's designed to do. So overall, in installation is extremely easy on this model when compared to some of the other chassis out there, which can, uh, you know, be a little, little more difficult. Okay, so let's do fit and finish. Uh, the fit of the barreled action into the AWT chassis was what you should expect from a high-quality rifle chassis system. The action seemed to mate the chassis very tightly with no detectable play between the two surfaces, and the recoil lug area presented a, a similar fit that other chassis systems offer. Now, although uh, a lot of guys uh, assume these aluminum chassis are okay to just go ahead and install, I actually, in my experience, kind of prefer to go ahead and use bedding compound um, and apply it to the rear surface of the recoil lug. Uh, that may be advised in any chass chassis system if you're looking for maximum harmonic consistency, if that's what you're desiring. Um, you know, there's microscopic variances and, uh, and uh, different tolerances and dimensions of the rear surfaces of the steel recoil lugs on factory rifles. Uh, those usually exist. So for a perfect fit into an aluminum chassis, uh, particularly on that critical surface on the rear end of the recoil lug, I would probably advise bedding uh, on that rear surface of the recoil lug anyways. Um, that being said, the tolerances on the AWT, long-range precision chassis that we're testing, were very close, and uh, where no additional fitting or bedding was conducted for this test. So we, although uh, 
I did decide to go ahead and uh, keep this uh, chassis after testing. I actually bought it. Um, so I'm probably going to go ahead and uh, put some bedding compound on the rear of that uh, that recoil lug just because that's the way I like to do things. But for our testing purposes, we left our sample chassis unmodified as to determine its out-of-the-box performance. Okay, Just so you guys can know where we're coming from here. The area around the tang and the safety showed pretty good fit. And the integral rail portion on the other on the underside of the main body forward of the magazine well appeared to be very nicely made as well. Uh, although the the flashlights and bipod adapters we tested fit the rails perfectly, uh, some of the rubber rail covers were uh, kind of tight and proved a little bit difficult to install. But you know, different brands offer different dimensions, um, and so like a better to find a better match, we ended up using, uh, I think we ended up with a UTG rail cover there uh, for that bottom rail. Um, something to be aware of. But the, the rails did uh, fit the other accessories very well. Um, the alignment of the barrel down through the stock channel and forehand extension was on center. And there was uh, plenty of room for, uh, even if you wanted to use a much, much heavier barrel than the varmint contour, if one desired that, uh, there's plenty of room in this chassis to go ahead and employ that. You got all kinds of room there. Um, the aluminum finish employed on this chassis, uh, the, the finish, the coloring there, is a Type 3 mil spec 8625 hard coat anodizing. Um, it's a pretty tough finish, and it was actually masterfully applied and looks very, very sharp. So that's probably what aided to our first initial opinion of the stock when you're getting it out of the box it just looks really sharp so the finish uh the anodizing is available in three different colors flat dark earth olive drab or black so you do have some options there and so overall fit and finish on this stock was very very nice as well that was one of the high points for sure um overall design let's talk about the design here so as noted before this stock was designed specifically for long-range precision shooting. After uh, visiting with the designer, I learned that one of his primary objectives was to build a stock that was lightweight, yet would provide uh, rock-solid rigidity. Although the design does employ a fully adjustable and removable buttstock, its uh, fit and finish proved adequate enough to uh, ensure its overall rigidity and harmonic consistency under firing conditions. So um, some guys might complain about there being different pieces to this chassis, but uh, it was so tightly put together that that wouldn't uh, develop any harmonic problems from a design point of view. So that kind of erases that issue there. Um, although the stock does appear to be very streamlined and lightweight, uh, much attention and care went into the design phase of the entire system. The long-range precision chassis is made primarily of 6061T6 SS aluminum, which is actually pretty durable stuff, and it offers uh, the opportunity to use less material to get the job done. So intuitively, the stock appears to be pretty light duty, but on paper, it's uh, even its most vulnerable points are plenty strong for field use. And we're going to come back to revisit this topic in more detail during the durability portion of this review. Uh, so we'll get to, get to that in more detail in just a sec. But overall design caters... Uh, to the long-range precision marksman who plans to lay down behind the rifle all day. So from the rear Picatinny rail where one can attach a butt monopod to the fully adjustable cheek piece to the drilled and tapped holes and the forend piece intended for a top cover where an operator could attach night vision equipment. This is uh, definitely stock intended for long-range and even tactical applications. So it's not really a hunting stock. So this stock is... Uh, in my opinion, the design is, is very visually attractive when compared to some of the other chassis systems I've used in the past and is very much user-friendly as far as stock adjustments and ergonomics. So adjusting the cheek piece, stuff like that, was very, very easy to do and uh, quick and easy. And yet the design, uh, you know, it was very, very uh, solid and rigid once you had everything tightened, uh, tightened down. One peculiarity of the model I tested worth noting is the uh, magazine well design. 
the uh, Remington short action model magazine well is designed for use in trenches or foxholes where the rifle would be t uh, potentially slammed forward into a berm against the magazine well to establish a, a solid shooting position. This is uh, something many soldiers kind of do subconsciously, and sometimes they do it very forcefully, especially, you know, when under stressful battlefield conditions and such. Uh, but with this in mind, the designer duplicated a magazine well profile similar to the M16 AR-15, but it was at the cost of incompatibility with the shorter five-round Accuracy International ma uh, magazines and the short actions. So uh, this particular model for the Remington short action is designed for use with the larger 10-round Accuracy International magazine. So that's something you want to make note of. And although uh, this is not so much of an issue for uh, most combat operators who may prefer the use of larger magazines anyways, users who may have already stockpiled the shorter 5-round mags for another rifle won't be able to use them in this particular model in the short action Remington. Um, so it should be noted that the long-range precision chassis for both uh, the long action models, those do allow for the use of the standard short five-round, you know, single-stack magazines. So um, this is only something to be aware of for those wanting to employ the Remington short action. Uh, the short action models just use the 10-round mags. So my final conclusions on the overall design is that um, the design is very well suited for long-range precision shooting, and uh, particularly uh, the short action model is for what it was designed for. It's uh, it's very it's very well done. The guy did a lot of thinking, and uh, he thought that it would be worth it to have a magazine well. And also another thing about that too is a lot of guys when they're shooting offhand, they like to kind of John Wayne the rifle, uh, where you kind of grip on the magazine well. So that's another thing. And I actually kind of do when I offhand my rifle, I do shoot like that a lot. So for me, I did like it okay, and I, I do use the 10-round uh, mags more than the 5 rounds, so it was an issue for me. But the, And the overall design is one of those things where it's fit to the application uh, you have to keep in mind as well. So if you have different applications in mind, uh, then the design would have to be uh, custom tailored for those applications. But for the ap applications um, advertised here, um, the design was very, very well done. Ergonomics. Let's get into er ergonomics. When one looks at this uh, long-range precision car, uh, chassis, it appears to be styled very similarly to the EDM Windrunner series of rifles. I don't know if any of you may have had the opportunity to lay behind one of the Windrunners, uh, but you may remember its feel. And I found the Windrunner rifles to be ergonomically kind of undesirable. Uh, you know, getting your head situated behind the optic while effectively maintaining an unstrained uh, cheek weld proved to be kind of a challenge in the in the Windrunners. However, surprisingly, with this uh, AWT chassis, this was not the case. Uh, the long-range uh, precision chassis offered surprisingly good ergonomics when compared with the other prominent rifle stock designs uh, that, that seemed to appear to look similar to this. I was actually quite surprised when first uh, shouldering the the LRPC. It was I was expecting it to be a bit awkward, but it actually turned out to be one of the most comfortable rifle stocks I've tested. Uh, you know, depending on your own individual tastes and equipment preferences, opinions may vary. But I found this chassis to, to be slightly more comfortable even than my trusty old McMillan A5, which is pretty thick and. Uh, its ergonomic superiority was considerably noticeable when you compare it against stocks like the Accuracy International chassis system, which is kind of a big square clunker. And uh, even the XLR, can, uh, the Evolution uh, chassis, can feel uh, a little bit awkward. But this uh, AWT is probably its best thing. Uh, the thing that stands out the most after doing the review was the ergonomics of it. It was very, very comfortable. It was a pleasure to lay behind and shoot. It tamed the already, uh, you know, tame recoil of the little 243 down to just a slight vibration upon firing. And if you used it in a, a, a larger caliber, you know, like one of the Magnums or a long action, um, I, I suspect it would uh, be very effective in uh, 
you know, how the recoil is going to push back on you. Um, that being said, its ergonomic impression was uh, l a little bit less desirable when carrying it around all the time when, when you're out in the field. I, I did do a full review. You know, I, I grabbed the rifle. I did some walking, carrying a bunch of stuff. Um, with the rail cover attached uh, forward of the magazine well, it did balance fine during carry, and it wasn't as bad to carry. Uh, with j without the rail cover up there, uh, trying to grip onto them that integral rail um, in front of the mag well was kind of pokey, you know, a little bit uh, uncomfortable. But it did it does balance very well during carrying with the heavy 26-inch uh, barrel, but it wasn't near as streamlined as like, a, you know, a classic hunting contour stock or maybe even the McMillan target stocks would be. So um, that's something to keep in mind. It's kind of designed for laying uh, down behind it. Its light weight uh, was definitely an advantage for carrying, but like uh, many of the other rifles geared towards long-range precision shooting, all the different sharp corners and angles added onto it, you know, when you have more uh, uh, accessories and movable parts and stuff, uh, added up after a long walk with the rifle. Um, I found carrying the rifle in a, pat a patrol position, you know, with the firing hand on the grip and the non-firing hand under the forehand was actually the best way to carry it around. Uh, and actually, to be honest here, to be fair, undoubtedly the massive 34 millimeter Steiner military scope with its large protruding turrets definitely played a role in amplifying the awkwardness of the entire system. So a lot of that impression was probably due to the scope uh, poking the guy because uh, it's a pretty massive scope uh, on that on that little rifle. So that was probably a big part of it as well. Uh, perhaps with the more streamlined optic it would have been considerably better. Uh, and before the optic was mounted, I, I didn't notice it uh, as much. Uh, the main point is that although this chassis would still suffice for game stalking purposes, the design does not make it quite as handy or comfortable while walking in the field as it does for laying down prone uh, in, in a prone position where it really, really shines. So in my, pos in my opinion, this design is primarily geared for a rifleman who would establish a shooting position and lay behind the rifle all day long and just pull the trigger all day. So for long range precision shooting purposes, uh, like in the, you know, in the case of our long range 101 series that we're doing, this stock would actually be very, very nice. Um, if you wanted for an elk hunting rifle, you might, you know, and, and you're going to carry it all day over the mountain and through the woods. Eh. It may not be as good. It's still definitely lightweight enough to uh, carry around, no problems. And if a guy had a, a, a light contour barrel on there rather than a varmint contour, uh, it would be uh, ease to carry due to its light weight. But uh, it's not as uh, handy as maybe like, you know, a classic hunting style stock for if you're going to carry the thing all day long chasing elk up in the woods. So overall ergonomics of the chassis were very good particularly with long-range shooting uh, in mind. For that, it would be excellent. Um, we did test the accuracy performance. Uh, the accuracy testing was conducted after an initial break-in period of about 60 rounds. The chassis was installed without any bedding applied to the recoil lugs, and uh, only one uh, ammunition was tested. Now, this review is not focusing in on the uh, accuracy potential of the Remington SPS rifle, but is rather just testing the long-range precision chassis for vibratory and harmonic anomalies that could possibly reveal themselves easily just by testing with any uh, consistent ammunition. So for reference, uh, the load used in this particular review was actually developed for a well-broken Ruger M77 VT. Uh, which with that ammo in that rifle shoots half minute of angle. Um, so that's just uh, due to note that this rifle or this ammunition was not loaded for this uh, rifle. After breaking in the uh, virgin bore of the Remington SPS factory barrel, the rifle was fired uh, both from sandbags and from a bipod at an initial range of 100 meters to confirm it's zero. Uh, firing at a quick pace across sandbags from a prone position in the field. Uh, and we're shooting through some light patches of grass. So this is field conditions that revealed a, a three shot group that was averaging about three quarter minute of angle. And that was at a, a very fast firing pace too. I was going really quick. Um, firing from the Harris bipod 
produced uh, averages of about one minute of angle, and we discussed uh, the effects of harmonic vibrations being amplified by bipods deployed in the field uh, on a, one of our long-range one-on-one videos. So that could be the explanation there. Uh, a few groups measured considerably better. I did get some awesome groups, the kind that a guy would normally take a picture of and uh, post, you know, in a, in a review. But, uh, you know, we averaged it into the rest of them for the purpose of the review, just to get a good scientific average. You don't want to just pick the best group and go with that. But I do suspect, based on the current performance, that after the bore finishes uh, breaking in completely and after a full copper equilibrium is established... And if a guy was to, uh, you know, get the recoil lug uh, bedded and an appropriate load was matched to the rifle, that the accuracy performance would be significantly better. So it would, uh, the long range precision chassis showed absolutely no signs of stock related harmonic or vibratory inconsistencies. Um, so that was a mission accomplished on the behalf of the designer who was uh, designing this from the ground up to be lightweight yet uh, very rigid. So uh, accuracy performance was completely adequate for the sake of this test. Uh, durability. This is the last big topic here. Nope, we'll be good. Although the LRPC is uh, not as robust as the Venerable Accuracy International Chassis System or uh, the Macmillan A5 fiberglass stock platforms that are real thick, its uh, structural integrity is actually more than enough to get the job done. The long-range precision chassis is made primarily of 6061T6 aluminum. A lot of guys call that the aircraft-grade aluminum, but it's a, it's a pretty tough material. Uh, the chassis is most rugged around the action and the magazine well areas. Uh, I foresee no way that the chassis could be structurally compromised in the areas that cradle the action. It's pretty dang stout around those. And uh, everything is built real, um, real solid. Uh, the the parts that appear the most susceptible to damage are the uh, slide rails that the buttstock is attached to. Uh, just at a glance, they appear significantly more streamlined than the rest of the chassis, which is uh, obviously a lot more beefy. So, uh, you know, being concerned about the durability of these slide rails that the buttstock is riding on, I I requested the engineering spec sheets of the materials and design for you guys. You know, sometimes a guy's initial impressions just by taking a glance at something may or may not be uh, accurate. So let's go ahead and uh, examine what I found in the spec sheets. So I examined the simulation of the 6061 aluminum bars used in the buttstock uh, slide rails. I actually got the spec sheets from the uh, designer on the stock system for those particular parts. And uh, so I was, you know, particularly interested in the study sheets for stress, displacement, deformation, and the safety factor. And, um, you know, although these things appear to be slim and light duty, uh, they offer more than enough strength and resistance to deformation to, to get the job done under any normal field conditions. So after a thorough examination... I found that the 6061T6 aluminum bars used for the buttstock slide rails will uh, take more abuse than you could ever probably conjure up. Um, the, each rail, even though they're real small, can take 600 pounds before deformation, and that's what the slide clamp slid uh, three, three inches back from the receiver. So that's about, about where I have mine adjusted. And that's about 1,200 pounds uh, before you have any kind of deformation to even start at all. So unless a guy was trying to destroy it and he got it, you were prying on it or, uh, you know, uh, driving on it or something, all in all, the chassis system is plenty strong for any kind of field conditions. Um, if something were ever to go wrong and break on it, AWT uh, chassis systems are guaranteed by a lifetime warranty, so that's one thing to keep in mind too. So at a glance, it appears to be uh, pretty lightweight, but in reality, upon inspection of all the different specifications, the uh, dur durability for this design using the materials that they used uh, are, are adequate. It may not be as overbuilt as the Macmillan or the Accuracy International, but it'll, it'll totally get the job done, and uh, he was able to uh, offer a lightweight stock that was still plenty durable. 
Um, there are some accessories available that I would probably uh, make note of here. Um, in this review, we tested the chassis with the removable free float forend. And this is something, if you're going to use a stock, that is highly recommended, uh, in my opinion, for an upgrade. Yeah, you're probably going to want to mount your bipod farther forward. Uh, a lot of guys do actually prefer, prefer it mounted a lot closer to, um, you know, the magwell. For certain reasons, uh, some guys like that feel of it or whatever. Um, but if you're used to a normal rifle platform like I am, and if you want the opportunity to go ahead and throw it over a rucksack or sandbags or just, uh, you know, use uh, the forend as a rest, then you're going to probably want to add that uh, forend option. It also has a top cover uh, with Picatinny rails that you can add that, you know, that's good for accessories and night vision equipment and stuff like that. Okay. So the price of the system is uh, just under $800. And uh, although that does appear to be a, a pretty penny, if you consider the price of, you know, uh, even a, a McMillan stock, which uh, is, seems like it would be less at first, you know, five $600 for a good McMillan stock, you got to take into uh, account the fact that you're going to have to get bottom metal for it. If you get some Badger bottom metal, that's going to be $300, $350. Uh, you're going to have to have it properly inleted and installed to your rifle, and you're going to have to have it glass bedded to your rifle so you can add uh, a little bit more on there. So in the long run, this uh, is actually going to be uh, a little bit cheaper than it would be to install a McMillan A5 with bottom metal. Um, it's going to be a little bit cheaper than the Accuracy International unless you find a really good deal on one of those. So value-wise, it's uh, definitely a, a fair price when you can uh, compare it to the other stocks that are similar on the market. It's strong suits as its ergonomics, and it is very, very nicely made. So uh, it's, it, it's worth the money. And it's uh, for long-range precision shooting, as the name you know suggests there, in the long-range precision chassis. Uh, for that type, for that shooting discipline, this stock is uh, very, very well mated. And actually, uh, the second I did get this uh, stock in for review, um, I had, I was actually testing the Accuracy International chassis on a, on my wife's new rifle, and she actually claimed the this one, the AWT chassis, because it's way, way more comfortable, and uh, it's it's a bit lighter as well. It's not as square and clunky, and the just the, the the feel of it when you're laying behind it, it was a lot more easy for her to, to shoot on the range. So uh, we ended up uh, actually purchasing. I sent I sent the company a check there. And uh, uh, again, to, to try to quantify uh, and assign grade number values for the for the purpose of, the, of this review, you know, in these different categories, like a one through ten score, would be extremely difficult to do on a product of this nature. A rifle stock is so much to do with personal preference and personal taste, and uh, your particular mission criteria and exactly what you're looking for in a stock. That it's almost impossible to fairly quantify any of those opinions. Really, is what they are. So if I was forced to quantify uh, a number value or a grade on, on this stock from 1 to 10, 10 being awesome, uh, 1 being kind of a pile of junk, uh, I would probably definitely give this stock a solid 8 or a 9 uh, for its intended purposes. Uh, and its intended purposes on, on our rifle that, that we set up here is uh, a target rifle that we're going to lay down prone most of the day. Uh, something that's really nice and easy to shoot round after round that you're not going to get tired laying behind. Something that's easy to adjust the cheek piece for so that you can get your head uh, nicely situated. That's another thing too. The scope um, sometimes um, on some of these rifles is mounted a little higher because, uh, you know, a larger scope and all that. So uh, uh, this thing had a lot of adjustment as far as, uh, you know, getting uh, proper cheek weld and length of pull. Uh, so and, and it's done right to where it's actually comfortable at the same time. So for those purposes, for long-range precision shooting, this is a winner. Uh, if you're going to, you know, like I said before, if you're going to be carrying this thing up and down mountains or something, uh, you might want to go for something a little more streamlined. Um, but for its intended design, uh, it's uh, a very, very good buy, in my opinion, and definitely worth uh, taking a look at. Okay, 
Uh, there are more reviews coming soon. We are going to do the Accuracy International chassis system. We're going to go through all the good points and bad points of those. And uh, we got uh, lots of other stuff up for review soon here. Um, I'm still trying to work on this uh, uh, Long Range 101 series. So we got several burners going at once, but we'll get it, we'll get through all of it here pretty soon. All right, so stay tuned, and uh, thanks a bunch for watching, and uh, share this with anyone you might think might be interested or is looking for uh, uh, a new rifle uh, stock or you know a chassis sy system that's easy to install and a pretty good option for someone who just wants to get a stock and be done with it. Okay, so I'm going to include on the tail end of this uh, review here the actual field review that we did out there. Uh, this is when we had our first initial impressions after zero on the rifle and uh, trying some long-range shots. A uh, little bit of wind distorting the microphone, so uh, bear, bear with it, but uh, I just throw it in there in case some of you guys wanted to check that out as well. Howdy, Rex here. We're out in the Badlands and we're testing this new aluminum chassis stock system made for uh, currently the Remington 700 long action and short actions. They're also going to be coming out in the Savage, but this is made by AWT, Applied Weapons Technologies. And uh, it's an aluminum chassis. It's got an attachable forend here with a couple rails. So you got the rail here, the rail here. It's attached via these four screws. And uh, it takes Accuracy International magazines. It's got a magazine release kind of a paddle shape to it like that, as you can see. So you just kind of hit that button and they pop out. It's got AR-15 style uh, grip on there. And the buttstock is completely adjustable. Uh, the adjustments are right in here. There's two screws that kind of tighten onto these bars. And the cheek piece is adjustable via this uh, crank right here. And uh, we have another rail on the bottom here. And this uh, toe design is kind of uh, designed for us long-range shooters who like to manipulate the toe of the rifle a lot with the sandbags to get on target. And it comes with a, a nice uh, recoil pad. This particular rifle we tested was a 243 Winchester, brand new Remington SPS varmint. Um, so we tested this stock uh, this evening and uh, we zeroed in the rifle and we even did a little bit of shooting at what was it, 1270, is that what we said? And uh, the stock actually is surprisingly comfortable. A lot of these chassis systems that are in this same style, I actually am not much of a fan of because uh, they just don't seem very ergonomically situated for the way I like to hold a rifle, I guess. Uh, they seem kind of cold and a little squared off or something, but this thing was actually really comfortable. And I was surprised too when I got it opened up how how nice it looks. It's a, whoever designed this did it has a pretty good artistic eye. And uh, they did a pretty good job just with the lines and how it's constructed. Uh, so it looks pretty nice. This isn't kind of an anodized finish. Maybe it was supposed to be tan. I can't really tell in this lighting. I think it's the tan finish. And uh, stocks seem to work very well. What's nice about this is uh, I use the Accuracy International chassis system a bunch and one of the difficult things to do is to remove mags and pop them out but this I really like the magazine release button that's a real nice feature there. Uh, rifles seem to perform very well accuracy wise obviously it's uh, free floated underneath here the entire way and it's a chassis so it's very firmly attached to the action should minimize your harmonic issues and it's, it's relatively lightweight uh, so, this is a very heavy rifle with the heavy barrel, and this Steiner scope weighs like two pounds by itself. So it's kind of nice to have this uh, weight reduction a little bit, like we do have. And uh, this this cheek piece is actually really nice. How this adjusts too, just turning this lever like this, you can just get it here, and you can just uh, turn it with your thumbs until it comes in uh, right about there. That's good. So you can quickly adjust your cheek piece as needed. It's a pretty nice feature. So it's very smartly designed. It does look like it's drilled and uh, tapped for uh, uh, some kind of top cover. It's going to go over the barrel. I'm going to show another uh, rail mount, probably for Ink Vision. I didn't uh, get that for the test. 
but maybe in a future video we'll do that. Um, this this forward rail is movable. You can adjust it forward or backwards, and this uh, rail down here is integral, so that's totally fixed. Uh, one thing I did notice is that uh, this model is designed for the long accuracy international magazines, like the 10 rounders. Uh, the five rounders is not really designed for that. So if you're using this one, you're going to want to use these longer magazines. That works. We'll get some more testing in with this, but uh, thus far I really like it. So, and it looks pretty cool. Like I said, I'm kind of diametrically opposed to most of the space age type designs, just because of the cowboy in me or whatever. I suppose I like a wood stock and a you know, blue rifle and stuff, but for usability, this thing's really nice. And it actually does look pretty cool, so maybe I can live with it. All right, Rex here. We'll catch you later. All right, let's get out of here.